Hey gang, Ross Brand here for LivestreamUniverse.com. Welcome to Livestream Stars. This is the show where we feature talented broadcasters delivering high-quality content across live stream platforms. We have a great guest tonight, Jeff Adams, who we'll bring in in just a second. And Livestream Stars is brought to you by Livestream Universe, LivestreamUniverse.com. But what we really want to tell you is if you haven't voted yet for South by Southwest, myself, Coach Jenny, Monique, Johnson and Karen Graves have a proposal in in the South by Southwest panel picker contest or uh, voting uh, for a Facebook Live panel, uh, actually about how to build your tribe and make money on Facebook Live. So if you haven't voted yet, please do go over to LivestreamUniverse.com slash SXSW. I'll put it up on the screen, LivestreamUniverse.com slash s x s w hey coach jenny welcome first comment <laughs> thank you coach jenny and let's uh, bring in our guest our guest tonight i'm so honored to have jeff adams on um i had a blast working with him on be live tv weekly got to know him both on and off the air jeff has got a, a wealth of experience on all things internet broadcasting uh from podcasting to uh, video, live streaming, production. Uh, he goes back and has done radio. He's done TV. He's done, he's pretty much done it all in broadcasting. And so any questions you have, please do throw them in the chat. Um, and Jeff is a wonderful resource to address those questions. He's also got an interesting history in the music business, and we'll get into that in a little bit. And of course, now Jeff is the chief happiness officer with Be Live TV, and he hosts Be Live's flagship uh, show, Be Live TV Weekly. Gets a huge audience, very popular show, has some great guests on, and it's really a great place to go to learn about how to use the Be Live TV platform. Get find out about the new features first. Ask questions. And more than all of that, Jeff's building, helping build a com real community around Be Live TV. So that's that's really awesome as well. He's the host of the Jeff Adams Show, and of course, Be Live TV Weekly. Welcome, Jeff Adams. It's great to have you on. Yo, oh, hey now, hey now. So forget all that. Uh, there's a little news going on in in your personal life. Congratulations on on the engagement. You know, thank you very much, but it felt really good just a minute ago. Like, before you uh, had me on, and this is going to sound crazy, I needed another beer. I said, babe, give me another beer. It was fantastic. She gave us <laughs> There he is, ladies and gentlemen, a man of the 2017. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Ah. <laughs> yes, the, it was so hard being single because you didn't have anybody to get you a beer. I had to literally get out of my seat and go get it myself. Oh, my God. The horrors you've been through. I know. The, 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 I, I, yeah, I don't even know what to do with myself. This woman is so good to me. She's so fantastic. So I'm, I'm very blessed that uh, she said yes. So there you go. That's awesome. Welcome, Barb. Welcome, Peter Nez. Uh, Coach Jenny's here as well. Great to see everybody. Um, and I do appreciate the comments. If you can, please do share this out. Let people know that Jeff Adams is here. He's going to take your questions about Be Live TV. If you do have questions, please throw them in the chat. We'll get to as many of them as we can during the next 45 minutes to an hour. And so, Jeff, tell me, um, you've got such a fascinating uh, background. I, I, tell me about your time in the music industry. Let's start Let's start there, because you certainly were in the music industry for quite some time, and and you've had a, a bunch of different roles. Yeah. I mean, I, <clears throat> I started off as well. I started off in radio when I was like a teenager and I, I always loved broadcasting, but I had more of a uh, passion for music because I would write before music. So uh, I was really excelled at basketball, but right, I had a full ride to go to Liberty university to play basketball. And, uh, but I chose a music route. My dad wanted to shoot me almost for choosing that. But then I went into uh the music industry, I got signed, I got a record deal. And my, my, my dad was the biggest supporter after that. He was passing out CDs. So, uh, but I got smart. I was one of these guys that, uh, it's kind of like live streaming. You get, I, I got fascinated with it. And then I'm kind of like, you know, tunnel vision when I, when I have a vision for something or a passion for something. So I went all in and I learned 
behind the scenes. So when uh, we were signed, I was kind of managing the band, self-managing, and uh, learned the music industry pretty quick. And then so when the our our record didn't sell the way the record company wanted it to sell back in those days, uh, I already had a job. I started working for the record company. And then I got into management, and then um, I still performed the music. So I was moonlighting on the weekends. And then uh, the big break was in 99. I started working for Jeff Hanson, Creed, the rock band's management company, and that was like a machine happening. So we, I worked with, developed a lot of big acts, uh, worked with them, and then uh, 2004, started my own company, started my own label, Universal Records, and stopped in 2013 to focus in live streaming. So one day I was I was kind of like scrolling through Facebook, right? And I came to this, this uh, live stream you were doing, right? Yeah. And I thought you were lip syncing. And I'm thinking, this guy's got skills like a broadcaster. Why is he lip syncing on here? And then I realized, wait, I think that's his music. He's entitled to sing his own music. Yeah. <laughs> so what kind of, tell us what kind of music you recorded and you know what that was all all about. Yeah, you know, so originally started, you believe it or not, I mean, I, I had the look of a rapper. I was a rapper first. Uh, okay. and uh, you know, I mean we we were like an all white rap group, you know, and I guess House of Pain and Beastie Boys already took that. And we were down with House of Pain. They knew who we were. So they, they worked. We didn't. Right. Uh, so I uh, did that. And then uh, I really had a passion for singing. So I, I started singing and I just mixed like everything in the blender. Like if I liked hip hop beats, I would mix rock music. So I started singing. And I just anything I ever did, you know, it's very DJ influenced too because I would DJ. So I just mixed whatever I wanted into music and just, you know, went from there with it. And uh, so it was it was fun. I still I'm still I just got back in the studio this past year working on the EP that we're going to release the TV film, try to get some placements on it. But it's just a, it's just a great creative outlet that uh, I will always do till the day I die. That's awesome. Welcome, Stephen. Welcome, Fernando. Good to see you both. Um, so when you look at live streaming um, and podcasting and even to extend to like radio, talking about the on air side of it rather than, say, getting your records played on the radio. Right. Record, records. I think I'm dating myself. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Say, hey, I, I still say videotaping. I had a videotape. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> Send me a tape of that. <laughs> Send me a resume tape. Yeah, You know, it's funny. It isn't that long ago because even as CDs came along and digital recordings and stuff, you know, the industry always reacts more slowly to these things. Right. So right. it wasn't that long ago, like when I was working in radio in, I don't know, 2003, 2004, 2005, people were still sending in cassettes. Even as late as 2007, I, I remember getting cassettes. So it isn't like just because new technology comes along everybody jumps to send that right like you right. you still think maybe i should just go with what's been standard for 20 years or 30 years right. um but so tell me about li for live streaming and broadcasting how does that kind of scratch your creative itch like what do you like about that that you know maybe is similar to how you felt about making music oh you know why because uh, you know i got into live streaming like in 2007 because uh, I was frustrated because I, you know, I really got heavily into management and uh, I'd always go in the studio and the producers would get mad at me because I was overly creative. I'd say, hey, why don't you try this? And they're like, can you get the heck out of my studio? So I was really frustrated because I didn't want to cross the line because I was doing a lot of business development for the artist and, and, and building their career. So for me, I I stumbled on this thing called, uh, it wasn't, uh, what was it called? It was called Blog TV back in the day. And then I got on, it was kind of like the first community driven video stream platform of course there was Ustream. i got i, I tested a uh, live stream which was called mogulus i was the first 75 to test live stream out uh then there was Ustream, and one of the big mistakes was early on with Ustream. this is a deadly i mean i they contacted me go hey you're in the entertainment industry you know why don't you tell people about Ustream and 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 back end of it all and they said, you know people in the churches and and at the time i was going pretty hard i had an artist in japan but I was honest. I said, hey, these artists are paying me to, you know, develop their careers and to develop what they're doing. And so they said, hey, well, why don't we work out some? How about we give you a percentage of the company? And I was like, no, I can't do that. You know, and then the first time they sell, they sell for twenty five million dollars. And the second time to IBM for one hundred and forty five million to IBM. 
So that's probably one of the biggest mistakes I ever made in my life. They offered me 20% of uh, Ustream early on. So that was a wow. uh, good, good look on me. Uh, so, uh, but yeah, I mean, but I, you I, didn't I, know at that time, right? So it's like, what are you, you're going to drop your income and have nothing. And then I, was honest. I mean, I go, if you paid me money, I'd go talk about it. So I'm blue in the face, but I just couldn't do it because artists were paying me to fly on their behalf. So if I'm talking about some other stuff that doesn't really, you know, have nothing to do with them, it was kind of like, Hey, if you put the money in the pot, I'll be more than happy to. That was a big mistake. I wish, but I, you know, I'm an honest guy. I couldn't have done that, but I, I got in the live stream because it was a creative outlet. I was frustrated. I loved broadcasting, so I started getting the microphones, and then and I would I would do all these hacks where I would stream the Moses, which is live stream and stream, and then I'd get on the the Blog TV and I would stream all both purpose. Now it looked like complete garbage, you know. Right. <laughs> I was always doing these hacks, always, 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 you know, curious. And then you know, early on, a, a lot of the live streamers, like you know, I met Stephen Haywood. Uh, early on, so there was, a, there was a little small core of us. I mean, there was Leo Laporte, obviously, but there was a small of us trying to figure it all out. And we kind of just kind of had this community. We would hang out and Google Hangouts, and um, you know, share stories, and then you know, get jealous of someone that someone just got a TriCaster and you didn't have one. Um, you know, and a, a typical radio behavior. We all like, you know, if someone was in the room, like, man, he really blew, up, you know. And we would just talk that radio disc jockey stuff, like, yeah, man, I don't know about him. I don't know. <laughs> a lot of gossip. And then I got smart and I got out. I was like, I know I don't have time for this. But um, I mean, you know, you know the system. You know the the, oh, the, the awards of the DJs and all that good stuff. So it was it was like that earlier on with live stream. And I think some people are still like that to a to a degree. But I mean, it's so massively huge now, um, and there's room for everybody. I mean, right. and uh, so it's not like it's a small leap. Because when I I took the leap of faith when I really wanted to do this, it was a it was a unique. Uh, opportunity but now anybody has the ability of with such as through be live and uh you know wirecast tricasters you know v mix whatever you're using to go live within minutes and connect to your audience if facebook gives you the algorithms right <laughs> <laughs> hey sabrina welcome sabrina cadini welcome michael a campbell welcome everybody who's joining us carlos phoenix is here Good yeah. to see everybody. Uh, we're talking with Jeff Adams from Be Live TV, host of Be Live TV Weekly and the Jeff Adams Show. And you can find out more about Jeff. You can go to thejeffadamsshow.tv and find him on social at the Jeff Adams. And you know, Jeff, when you're you're talking about like all the different hacks and the different things you did, and along the way, obviously, you've learned a ton about. Um, producing live video and the equipment that you can use and what you can do to upgrade, uh, you know, the quality of your video and your production and bring in all sorts of different elements. Uh, did you learn that because you just thought it was cool or did you learn that out of necessity because the tools that were around when you got started didn't make it easy to do very much? Yeah. Um, I, I tell you what. Oh, thanks, Melody, for the nice comment there. I appreciate that about the engagement. Um, but uh, I, uh, I didn't. I think I did it out of necessity because, you know, this is no offense to my my buddy Stephen Haywood. Because I mean, I met him at an NAB like several years ago, and he says, "Hey, I saw some of your broadcast." He goes, "You should let me produce your your show." I mean, and if you go back, I mean, you can go to YouTube, go to Jeff Bouncer. It's pretty brutal. I had Wirecast and I had reverb on my mic. Right. Um, it was back to me, you know, uh, me and Lori were, were looking at some old shows last night and they were pretty bad. But the technology we had, I was bringing in, uh, you know, Skype calls and, and doing it. And then Steve, Steve kind of gave me the standard, you know, Stephen Haywood from the Tech Buzz. Uh, right. He was kind of producing the show and I, I go, I go, this is the level I have to reach. So I started researching more. Uh, but then I got frustrated because he's a big hunter and then I uh, would have a show saying he goes, I'm not doing any shows this week because I'm going hunting. And so for me, I was like, I got to figure this stuff out and, and figure out how to do it myself. So I'm not depending on anybody. Uh, but I've learned, you know, I, I named him the broadcaster, you know, uh, uh, the broadcaster, uh, the, the wizard of broadcast magic. I gave him that nickname because he really was. So I learned a lot from him. Uh, and uh, it's, that was kind of my, my guru. Uh, from back in the day, because I'd ask him questions, and you know, obviously he works for Wirecast now. Um, but uh, I, you know, it, I, I felt really early on with him, just having someone like that early on. Uh, he invested in me and wanted me make me better, and I, I learned so much from him. You know, and I still, we still talk from time to time, and we talk shop for two and a half hours. And uh, but he's really a brilliant mind with this stuff, and he's not given enough credit for it. 
Yeah, he's been he, he's somebody that I kind of look to when I I got started. Not that you know I've anywhere near that kind of setup that you guys have or anything, but just okay. There's a way to do this better. There's a way as you grow that you can bring in certain elements and you can improve the quality of what you're doing. And it's possible to do a live stream or a live video show that resembles TV if you want to go in that direction. And I don't know that we want all of our live streams to resemble TV, but certainly there are things from professional broadcast production that can make your shows better. And I I think probably this is a good transition to to talking about Be Live TV, because I think one of the things we both love about Be Live TV is it gives you some of these tools at a, at a level that doesn't require any sort of technical expertise. You can add lower thirds like we have our names on there. You see that I've I've put Jeff's website, his his social media. When I first came on, I was able to put a lower third with LivestreamUniverse.com and where to vote for me for <laughs> and our team for South by Southwest, LivestreamUniverse.com slash South by Southwest. Uh, just in case you haven't voted yet, please do vote. I uh, voted. I voted. You did. You, know, you definitely did. Thank you. And uh, we love all the comments, too, that everybody's left. Um but my, my point is that, that Be Live TV gives you the ability to bring in a guest. It gives you a waiting room where you can actually have one guest come in and then bring another guest in. You have a lower third identifying the guest. Um, and I, I think it's it's a move for the the average. It, it, it's bringing the entire industry, so to speak, up a level, right? I mean, if you've got all the bells and whistles and everything else, and you know how to produce yourself, then you make a choice. Do you want do you want a, something that's easy or do you want something that is, you know, full customization, right? But um, I, I think how quickly you can get going with Be Live is one of the reasons why I use it, even though I have Wirecast and stuff like that, because being able to tell a guest to show up at 655 and not needing to explain anything other than you use this link. Right. <laughs> Right. Is is certainly good when you have busy people such as yourself who who take some time to come on on the show. Yeah, you know, you know, Be Live is phenomenal. I mean, I, I, when I say that is is it's it's simplicity to the core, you know. And it's like a lot of people, you know, don't want to go out and figure out Wirecast because you got to know, man. You got to really study some of the software and ha- physical hardware, and you got to have passion for it. You're gonna be really frustrated because, you know, for me, I was just saying this the other day. I mean, I'm, I'm starting a new show with uh, Stringspot. They're a, they're a private CDN. They have a lot of cool features. They've been a, a sponsor of the Jeff Adams Show for a long time, but it's based around live streaming from the pro level to mid level range. So we're gonna be interviewing a lot of different uh, uh, people on that show. Uh, and people that have questions about the hiring stuff about be live simplicity is the key because some people want to just get their message on. They don't want to fool around with a bunch of wires. Cause I was saying, I was trying to uh, figure out something with V mix uh, on Sunday and it frustrated the heck out of me because it just, the software had to be updated and have an updated to do what I needed to do. And I'm just sitting there going, I had to tell the, the, the new show. It's like, we're going to have to probably postpone it for another week, week and a half until they fix this issue with the, the calling system. So, like with Be Live, I mean, people don't. I mean, you use your webcam. I'm using Be Live, you know, webcam right now. Um, you know, uh, and I, I, I like simplicity. I think people like simplicity too because, you know, I think there's like I call it the acoustic version. When you show up with a a webcam or your phone, people like that. They're used to seeing that with eyes, and it makes you more approachable. Because I, you know, with the Jeff Adam show, we do it's high high end, you know, pro level show. But I think that makes when people see that, it makes it feel like we're untouchable where, you know, OK, that's just TV. They don't pay attention to us, you know, right. and uh, with Be Live, you're with your audience. And it's like I was sharing this today on Be Live Weekly. It's like you invite someone over for Thanksgiving dinner and just imagine if you just did all the talk and you just sit there and go, man, this guy won't shut up. With Be Live, it opens up the conversation. Right, right. People can actually chime in in the chat room. They feel part of the conversation. So that's why I love the platform so much, because it just gives that that. That feel like you're really in the room and you're and 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 everything you say matters because it pops up on the screen. Well, that's it. And I, I think when you when I've used some of the other apps that let you go to uh, Facebook Live, um, 
I, I feel like I'm very distant from the people who are watching and from the chat and the community, whereas here having the comments come up in the back end and I can watch them as they come in without having to go into look into another browser or look away at my phone. And then I can share them on the screen so everybody can see the comments as they come along. It, it makes a huge difference in terms of engagement. And that's a big factor. And I, I mean, yes, you can replicate that. Um, but the amount of work that it takes to replicate that, at least at this point, who knows, maybe something will come along and, and, and make it easier. But um, for Facebook Live, I, I know Coach Jenny, who, who I, I think is still here, um, I know that she loved this platform from like the beginning because I remember she did a video talking about all the benefits of the platform and why she's chosen to use it back um, when I was doing updates and be live kind of yeah. came along and I, I ran that video. Um, and, and so it's just, it's a platform that a, a lot of people have taken to. And I think besides blab, right? Like blab was sort of a unique situation. Um, and then we all sort of went our separate ways, but, be lives doing a lot of stuff to kind of rebuild that community. Jenny says she's here uh, to kind of rebuild that community, that sense of community. It's different, but unlike unlike Blab, Be Live is actually focused on quality and helping people get better as broadcasters. Which Blab hit a certain point, and then they like didn't really want people to be broadcasters. Right? Yeah, I mean, you know, and that's the cool thing about Be Live is like they. They listen to the community and, you know, that's all their heart is. They want, they want to empower people to do better Facebook lives with their, with their brand. And, uh, and it's, and it's just really, really simple. And it's, you know, I got news. I mean, it's just going to get better and better. So like if you private message them, it's like, oh, they didn't respond to me. They're also listening. They're listening to right, what you're right. And then, you know, the cool thing is they open that up. That's the biggest thing Blab didn't do. Cause I talked to Sean. I talked to all those guys early on uh, on that stuff and they didn't listen, you know, and there was right. so many people using the platform and, you know, be live. They listen, they listen, they give you the re they give you the tools that you need. Like everybody wanted screen sharing. Guess what? You got screen sharing, you know, <laughs> you know, you, you right. have the ability to bring in high end uh, photos from your Facebook feed now as part of the broadcast. I mean, so they're listening and they personalize the lower thirds and they're going to get better as well. So, I mean, that's why I think, you know, out of all the, the uh, other competitors out there trying to do the same thing through a, you know, web browser live stream is, you know, be lives. They're handing it to them. It's affordable based on there's, you know, there's like, there's that telescope that's, you know, that's going on and their prices. I talk to them. They do a lot of high end stuff for a lot of TV, uh, like Fremantle, uh, mm -hmm. like American Idol. They make software for that, but it's unaffordable. They, they want, they've got a price range of $3,000 a month and they bring up, you know, I think that's what, uh, that's what uh, Mario Armstrong uses for his show. He's using a, a telescope and that price range is pretty high. And then they said, well, we'll give you a beta test version to do for the Jeff Adams show. How about $800 a month? I said, no, I can't even justify that cost. So like be live, the tools that they give you, is so dang affordable, you know, and uh, that's why they will they will win and continue to win in this in this race of uh, the desktop portal to uh, live stream in the Facebook. Well, I love that I can actually um, change the color of the lower third and not just choose like blue or whatever, but I can actually take the color like the exact color code or whatever hex code or whatever you call it from yeah. my that i use on the banner of my website and make the lower thirds that exact color and then i can add a logo in the corner so it's it's branded um with the live stream universe logo so I, i'm i'm love i'm loving using it for my for my interview shows welcome terry johnson good to see you so many great people here today thanks everybody for joining us uh if you haven't had a chance to do so please do share it out and if you shared it out earlier there's no there's no rule says you can't share it out again right. so please please do uh it, it's so great to see everybody here um uh, you know so when you're talking about the the screen share feature um i haven't seen a lot of people using it i've seen some people using it can you talk a little bit about how that works and and what the advantages are to using it just I, i'd love to see more people use that if they if they're in, so inclined right if it fits with their broadcast shouldn't use it just to use it but 
Well, yeah, implementing, I think it's too, it's like, you know, I mean, we all have, um, you know, the, the needs for it. I, I didn't really, I would like, I go, man, why do people want to share their screen? That's kind of tacky. But then when I, when it became available, because people asked for it, I started using it with BeLive Weekly. So I'd use it as a demonstration to show what was going on, to show what BeLive.tv could do from an angle like, hey, here's here's the uh, the room here where everybody's at, here's a chat. And then it made it very easy to show how, how it works. I've seen other people show, I've seen people set up with a, an extra computer monitor where they're using something they want to pull in that's kind of live as well. So, I, you know, it serves its purpose. I don't do a lot of uh, desktop sharing. I just don't have the need for it because I'm not doing, you know, uh, graph charts or anything of that nature. But I also always said too, if you're doing that, you know, like through PowerPoint, you had the stills, you could just upload it through the photos on Facebook and just pull it through photos and it'd be a lot cleaner and, and sharper looking, you know? Right, um, right. But, no, uh, you know, it's, yeah, it's just really easy to use. I mean, you'll see it when you, you, you sign into BeLive.tv. It's like, I think it's the, uh, the in the middle right there, it said share your screen. You just click that. And if you use Google Chrome, you might have to download something real quick, but it'll give you the download real quick and you'll be able to grab your screen and use it in your broadcast. Now, it'll actually share your entire screen, or can you choose, like, the app and the window or whatever? I think, like, right now, it's just the entire screen. I haven't, I have, like, that could have been updated. I haven't I haven't used it for BLI Weekly for three weeks or so, so it could be updated, but I think it's just the full screen as of right now. Okay, so if, I, if I'm using the same computer, then basically you're seeing the back of my B, B Live. Yeah, you're yeah. seeing the lobby and where we're yeah. hanging. So, um... But that that could be cool, like with a window or something, if you could actually like I could actually bring in some video. Um, for instance, I would do it without any audio. Right. But while you're talking about hosting be live weekly, I could actually bring up uh, an old video of you hosting or whatever and play a play a little bit of that as sort of like B roll or whatever behind what you're yeah. what you're saying so there's a lot of possibilities for where where this can go certainly um and 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 different tools what are some of your favorite features then what are some of the features you like to use the most uh, i'm not i you know it just i mean gosh i mean the, it's the chat you know pulling right. it and popping it up on the screen i mean that to me is will always be my favorite fe feature about BeLive.tv is that feature. And then when the, we, we introduced the talk show, I mean, that was revolutionary that you could bring in, you know, you could bring in one guest at a time, you know, the face-to-face -face and have be able to have multiple people waiting to pop in your broadcast is phenomenal. I mean, you know, they just sit there, you give them the code, they pop in, you bring them in when you want to bring them in. You can have three, up, three on the camera all at the same time, which is fantastic. So uh, definitely the chat acknowledging the chat in the window and then obviously the talk show bringing in multiple people at one time and just really blowing up a show and bringing in multiple guests at, at times and popping them in and out is phenomenal for me. So um, when you look at, uh, you know, you look at uh, the music business, right? And you were kind of seeing where that business was going and you were able to work in all sorts of different roles. And um, where do you see live streaming going? I mean, do you see it like, every business is going to be doing this or, you know, it's going to become the new TV or do you think it's like, you know, something that a core group of people who have a message and want to get it out or have enjoy this kind of thing. It's an outlet for creativity, but not necessarily something that's going to take off or be that monetizable or, you know, people using on behalf of their businesses. Obviously people are using it all different ways, but you, you get where I'm, I'm going with that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think, you know, it's, it, you know, not, you know, I don't know everything under the sun. I don't claim to know everything, but, you know, the insight I've always kind of had was um, I, I thought live streaming created a culture of it's kind of like the music business where you, you have these people that really get addicted to it and they go, oh, what kind of camera is that? And you start looking at cameras and you look at video cards and you look at these different type of things. But I really feel that live streaming is going to be uh, a big it's it, we, we haven't even scratched the surface yet. And what can be done and you know facebook obviously their announcement i think it was like a month ago they're investing in the live streaming shows they're paying good money for them and they're, they're right. looking for highly produced shows um over you know overall so it's going to get higher quality you're going to start seeing shows like you would see like uh that you would see on abc cbs nbc they're going to start doing deals with facebook you're going to see a live studio audience you know you know mario armstrong cracked the service on that but you're going to really see like right. the higher end budget shows 
we have a live studio audience and they're launching shows on Facebook because they, they cut a deal with them. So the, the algorithms are going to open up. They're going to reach a lot more people because that's the biggest thing with Facebook now. It's like you can hit miss. I've had up to 65,000 people watching up time up to one. You know what I mean? Uh, and it really based on the share, the, the, the impressions and, the, you know, and what's going on. So if you, if, if that's not, it's not opening up for them. It's kind of like, that's because that's what always people ask me. It's like, how do you, how do you get numbers? I said, well, it's all about really about sharing, um, you know, and then having access, you know, having access to a page that's 3.5 million people uh, that helps, but you know, you gotta, th you gotta think of three, 3.5 million people, you, you know, you're probably going to gain not even that type of audience. You're probably like 250 concurrent viewers at one time. Now I know there's other people too. I think you saw Meredith that one time. She does the uh, mom blog. Um, right, right. And that's not appropriate. And she got close to a million. But when she goes on, those women show up. They share. And I've seen her at one time have 1,500 concurrent viewers at one time. So it really depends. I, I think you know not the. I think women do really well on Facebook when they have like a brand. They do really well because women get behind women and they push the heck out of it. Us men were ugly to look at. You know, it's you know it's, it's a tough sell. <laughs> You know, women are better and men like to look at women. Let's be honest. Right. So if you're a woman <laughs> not live streaming, you know, you should be live streaming because you can really gauge on us because guys will just watch to watch because you're a woman because we love you guys, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, it, it's it's so interesting how many different possibilities there are. I, I think with Facebook, n no doubt Facebook wants this to be a place where you come to watch what would be your TV shows. Right. Like. Facebook is going to be wants to become ABC or NBC or CBS or at least another option on your on your cable, you know, but but not on cable. They want you to come to Facebook and then do all the other stuff you do on Facebook and watch your show. So, I mean, I, I think at some point or maybe they're already doing it, they're going to be really setting up a schedule where, you know, anytime you jump on Facebook, you can, you know, you can check your messages, you can like pictures and look at videos, or you can go to like what their main show is at that time and watch it. I think. Do I mean, do you know, I mean, I don't, I don't know this because I, I, I was going to go somewhere with this. So to have the accurate number of how many people are actually online on Facebook at one time, that would be pretty impressive to know because you know, with their power, they could literally open it up to if they wanted to break something pretty fast, it would show up in everybody's newsfeed with a finger snap. You know, that's and that's right. pretty impressive. That's and that and you're talking about reaching more people than you would ever reach with a cable TV or network TV at one time. You know, we're talking in the millions, you know, and we're talking all over the world. No restrictions or, you know, restrictions in a few countries. But in general, the reach is beyond what live you know network tv live or recorded but when they're yeah. in their first run of a show um it, it, coach jenny says uh, this is interesting facebook watch might be replacing that discoverability we love back in the blab days and you know back in the blab days we were always trying to find a way to figure out when everybody's show was and you know shows would come and go and whatever and, and maybe that's what facebook wants is really a lineup that you you know like you know, NBC used to have must see TV Thursday night or whatever. This is your, this is your Facebook live lineup. Yeah, I know. I know they just signed on uh, the Levon Ball, that family, uh, the the guy just got drafted by the Lakers. They just signed on. They're paying for reality shows. I don't know if it's going to be live or you know like pre recorded, but they just signed on. That's one of the first shows they're actually actually going to launch on Facebook. So, but I think. Uh, you're going to see a lot more shows that are active too. You know, I've always had a vision for live streaming a long time ago coming from the entertainment industry is, you know, really interactive shows where um, it's, it's, it's live streaming. It's kind of like the Truman show, you know I mean? With the right. movie the Truman show uh, that could really, really happen where you're really watching. I mean, that's how Justin TV, which is now the, uh, the gaming network, Twitch, that's how Justin TV started because Justin started streaming himself every single day. And I think the reality of really like highly produced cameras and, and watching somebody and shooting stuff like the office or, you know, arrested development where there's improv acting like Kirby enthusiasm going on and people can interject in the chat. It's really endless because that's what I want out of my entertainment. I almost expect that now because I, if I watch stuff on demand or Netflix, I get frustrated because I want to talk to somebody about it. 
like you know if you're watching Breaking Bad for the second time through, and you're like, why did Walt do that? And you and, you, and no one's watching with you. It's it's it, you know you know what I mean. That's right, why right. Twitter ca caught on like the hashtags when you're watching live TV. But like with fa face you know the lives, it ruined me because I automatically think there should be interaction going on with what I'm watching now. And I think a lot of people want that now. And that that is the future. You're going to see a lot more higher end stuff where you can interact and, and, and project what you want to see and what, you know, what the outcome of the show is going to be. That's the real advantage of, of live streaming versus traditional TV is the interactivity. And maybe eventually TV will catch on and say, we've got to bring this. You know, if, if you can do it online, the same TV networks have the same capability to bring in a Facebook chat and things like that. They just haven't done it so far. Um, hey, Bobby, what's going on? Um, so anyway, there's this link here, right? That you see on the screen. That is a guest link. If you are, uh, interested in actually coming in and asking Jeff a question on air, uh, you can do that. You can click that link that I put up there. You'll see it in the comments, uh, should be sort of towards the top of the comments and that will bring you into the lobby. I can bring you up and you can ask your question on camera, or if you prefer throw a question in the chat, uh, we'd love to get your question uh, to Jeff uh, in the time that we have remaining. Uh, Carlos Phoenix says 360 TV is next on Facebook. What do you know about 360 TV? Well, I mean, you have the ability, the the uh, the inputs levels through your mobile device uh, streaming in 360. You can do 360. 360 is still a huge thing. I mean, it's going all over the place. And that and that's just and, and you know, 360 is going to be that's a big, big thing for Mark Zuckerberg, too, is the 360 element, which is great that Carlos mentioned that. But for me, with the, that stuff, it's like, you know, you can get overwhelmed pretty quick. Like, I got to go do this. I got to go do this. I got to go do this. And, you know, I've been doing live streams since 2007. I'm going to stay right here. Um, and, you know, maybe one day I might do a 360 feed. I don't know, but it's not a priority for me right now. And just, you know, with the augmented reality VR stuff, I love it. But it's just like, man. It's like I decide, I tell people all the time, it's like, you got to pick a road, you know, and uh, stay, you know, because I want to, you know, I love broadcasting. So I'm going to obviously stay in this lane. And, you know, if I have to change in time with technology, I will. But, uh, you know, 360 is massive. I got a pair of uh, VR. I was doing a consulting job for the uh, government, which did they did uh, uh, a lot of uh, virtual reality stuff for Marines. They would do training for Marines. So I had to get really I had to really know that stuff with the live stream that we were doing for the government as well. So I got a, you know, I, I kind of got a grasp on it early on, but it's just like it's a whole different world. Uh, that's a whole different show that you could talk about where that's going. But I mean, that's interactive too. It's you know, and it's all with this. It's it's all going to be mobile technology where you just pop right. it in and you're good to go. But you're talking about new shows with that. I, I there's there was one show developed for just for 360 VR already that uh, you know had a host and you can look around and. It, it's phenomenal. I mean, this stuff is insane. It's growing really, really fast. But, you know, my heart will always be live streaming in this, you know, and I think, Ross, you can relate to that, too. Right, absolutely. 360 doesn't really fit into that workflow. Right. I mean, it, it just you, – you can you can add as you – can, you can only go so far where – I mean, yes, you can add different elements, but at some point, really, it's the conversation, right? I mean, really, this is – more like a radio show where we happen to have the ability to see each other, then this is something that really translates to VR or AR or 360. I mean, okay, right. you can move around and see Ross and Jeff from the left, the middle, the right. You know, it's still two heads here talking to each other. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I think, I think it would be, I mean, like, you know, we, uh, we were going to subcontract, it was like this Christian band, this was like two years ago. We were going to do a job, I think it was with the Newsboys, where we were going to position and do the first interactive uh, fan experience in live uh, live streaming in 360. We we're going to do it on a private CDN, but uh, the ability to where the fans, you we'd have fans, so they have the ability. So we'd be able to bring in mobile devices so they would get their perspective. But you could literally, uh, the, the band was going to have stuff on their hand, the drummer, so you could pick where you wanted to be. But also from the VR perspective, you can look around like you're really sitting in the arena. So um, that can be done now. It has been done. But uh, I'm telling you, it's the sky's the limit. That's why I always tell people that have vision for live streaming. They're like, well, can we do something in VR? Yes, you can. <laughs> There's a way to do it. Now that Facebook's opened it up, you want to do it on Facebook, uh, the the uh, 
the quality is really bad. It's not up to where it needs to be yet, but um, in time, but there's full CDNs now that you can get on the private level that right. you can do straight, you know, uh, 4K 360 live streaming now, which is crazy. Wow. Welcome, Mike Murphy. Good to see you. Uh, recent guest on Livestream Stars. Marlene, thanks so much for all your nice comments in the chat. Everybody else, thanks for keeping the chat going. Uh, Professor Nez is over at the DMV, so he says he can't join. They would flip out. Yeah, you don't <laughs> want to mess around in the DMV. <laughs> and then he has a couple other choice comments. Uh, but the DMV is not a fun place to have to spend the afternoon. No. Um, Carlos Phoenix says, for good quality, 360, do you need 8K or 16K? You know, like right now, you know, I, I think it was two years ago I finally saw a first 8K TV. But, I mean, you got to think about the viewing experience with it. I mean, people are just getting 4K now. And cable providers, if you still have the cable bill, which I don't, cable only still streams at 720. They're only giving you a 720 feed, but they're selling 4K TVs. So you got to think about that. Do I need to go out and get an 8K camera? Probably not because the technology hasn't added up, especially for, you know, these monitors right here, these TVs. If you're using cable, you're getting a 720 feed. The only one I know that's doing 4K right now is Dish. That's it. You know, cable, you know, Bright House, they change the name of Spectrum. They're, they're giving you a 720 feed still. So, you know, the necessities of like, oh, 4K, we need 8K. You know, why do you need to stream in 4K when you have limited bandwidth anyways? Because when, you know, if you got a mobile device, if someone has, you know, low frequency using LTE, that's going to eat up their band, you know, their their time. And plus on your end. So, I mean, in time, I think it will be when the Internet speeds get a little bit more faster. People with fibers are less expensive. Yeah, have at it. But like right now uh, to have that stuff would be cool. But what would be the purpose of actually having that and using that? You know, when when a lot of people are not even using 4K to stream yet. I mean, because you're at 720 and Facebook only allows 720 right now. So, you know, cool gadgets to have. But I think we're probably five or six years out from actually seeing a you know, 8K and, you know, 16K really develop, you know, I mean, I look at a 4K screen right now, my mind's blown. I got, you know, I got one here and then one in the family room and I stream stuff to 4K. And I'm like, whoa, this, this is amazing, you know? Yeah. Mike, Mike Murphy says computers can barely handle processing 4K video now. That's true. It's very true. You know, um, I know live stream adapted, you know, live stream with their, their, their platform, they adapted 4K streaming where you can 4K stream. But it's just like, why? I mean, if you, if people are not consuming that, then why why are you using it? Especially if you're doing this, I think 720 is fine, you know? And some people, you know, want to stream at 1080 for like YouTube and things of that nature. But right. uh, outside of that, I mean, you really, you really don't need it right now based on the technology that we have in our hands right now. Right, right. T tell us a little bit about your studio there. I mean, it's so cool. I'm going to just put you on solo so we can see a little more of the the background um, I, I, you know what i should i should have popped in on the tri crash i should have turned it on but let me grab my webcam I, sh I didn't think about that i'm sorry ross i should have i should have popped on through the tri so i could like switch cameras and whatnot but let me pull this up because this is going to be so this is what i normally sit like for the guests who i do the jeff i'm sure i do be like weekly it's kind of multi multi-purpose but you know the studios you know that's where i kind of sit uh during the show and obviously i have a try it and let me see i'm looking at the screen here there's the tri cast right on none of it's on uh, I got different microphones and there's, you know, I have over here, let's see, I'm looking at the monitor and make sure it's not, let's do it, but uh, over here there's a uh, Invonix David 4 on the bottom of that rack now. That's what they use at uh, FM radio stations. Uh, you know, it's FM processing. So people are like, hey, how do you sound like big on the radio? Because I'm using the Invonix 4 they use at radio stations. And I have obviously the DBX, you know, for compression on my mics. Uh, then I'm using a, an Arrakis board here, a small, a small radio board. And then over here, you know, I have, you know, Wirecast going and then I have a uh, uh, instant replay. And then over here I have, it's not on, but I have my whole radio station in the cloud right here with phone systems that people can call in. And uh, obviously the cameras, different monitors, and then I have a Blackmagic Ursa camera, which, you know, you can shoot, you know, indie films on that if you need to. So I use that as my main, my main one of my main cameras that I have. And then, you know, miscellaneous wires everywhere. But it's, it's you know, it's pretty elaborate. It's pretty elaborate. It gets out of control. Uh, you know, there's a, there's a way to the madness. But um, 
I, I, I enjoy it. I mean, cause I, like I said, I do everything from A to Z with live streaming. So it's good to have this stuff available when someone asks for it for a job. Man, I love it. I, I think I'd like be lost in heaven running around in there. <laughs> well, it gets overwhelming at times, you know, and that's what I was saying to Lori. I was like, I was just like, you know, because I, I just like turning things on. You know, that's what great about BeLive.TV. You can show, you know, turn everything on and then within minutes, you know, you're off the races. With this technical setup based on the job that you do and you get hired to do, there's a lot of engineering that goes goes on. Right. And it, it sucks your creativity out of you. When if I'm sitting there running wires, pulling stuff out, troubleshooting stuff, and I got to do a broadcast, I'm, I'm toast. I mean, I show up on the camera just like dead. Cause I have no energy cause that it's just so mind consuming. And it, 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 it the gift of engineering is a beautiful, beautiful thing, which I haven't mastered. It just stuff drives me nuts. Sometimes just figuring it all out and wiring, finding the ground, a hum and a system. It's a lot, a lot of work, right, right, right. a lot of maintenance. Yeah. And then, you know, in TV, obviously, you know, you're a one man show basically. And in, in TV, you've got a whole team of people doing this. And yeah. if you're on air, you're not you're not setting up the engineering side of it. You're prepping to do what you're doing on air. Radio, sometimes you run your own board. But again, the more sophisticated part of, of the whole engineering setup and everything is being handled by somebody else. You're not, uh, you know, doing your show and you're worried about are the wires grounded or this or that. You're just okay, maybe you have to pot up the music or play the commercials or whatever. So, I mean, really with live streaming and podcasting, um, every time you add an element, right, you need three other elements to, like, make sure that that works or need to be, like, each each thing I add, I realize I need something else to go with it, right? If I add a cam, I'm looking at a camcorder, okay, now I need a, a... a, a capture card if i if i have a you know some type of camera that isn't a webcam okay now i need a tripod to put that like right. okay these are small things in the picture of what you're doing but just expand that out as you get more and more expensive complex equipment and you have more complex setup um think about all the other elements that ah. you need to go to make that work and if one of those elements is out of place or isn't working you it could shut down your whole your whole show yeah the the uh you know with it i tell people it's it's you know behind where i showed you where i do the jeff adams show it's like control central it's like sitting in the millennium falcon like hand solo because all the gear that's based on it but i've trained myself over the last four years that i am running the board i'm monitoring the phone calls that come in i can monitor what people that come in the video chat i'm monitoring the the audio feed to the radio stations that we syndicate to I also switching the TriCaster at the same time and being the main host and making sure everything, it's like a trade that I've learned. And if I don't do it, like when I do NAB or something out in Vegas and I'm like behind this anchor desk and I'm just sitting there, I feel really naked. Like I feel really naked right now because I'm not controlling anything. It's like, I always feel like I have to be like adjusting audio. Like, oh, that's not sounding well. Let me fix this. And when I, when I, and I think that's why I really feel like really strange when people ask me to be on like their live stream. Cause I go, Oh my God, I'm going to be so weird because I can't fiddle with anything and fix something <laughs> out. But, it, but it's, 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 re- it's actually relaxing because I don't have to do that. And I still like doing this. I feel really naked. Like I should be like, Oh my God, there's a, let me go fix this real quick. You know? And, and, you know, cause that's just, wow. I just thought that's how I've, I've, I've learned this trade. It's like, it's just something going on all the time that I have to fix and, and monitoring so much. And then again, that's why it makes be live so easy to use sometimes, you know, because you can just get consumed with looking at the chat sometimes when you're hosting and popping it up and reading all the comments. Right, right. How do, you, how do you handle calls? How do you handle calls uh, by yourself while you're on the air or you just pop them on and, you know, yeah. what you get is what you get? <laughs> yeah, I have, I've had a long time sponsor of the show. They're called Backbone Radio dot com. And uh, they've given me my own on, online station. It's in the cloud. So uh, when I'm not live, it's playing reruns. And then it gives me a feed of, uh, you know, another, you know, we got like two online stations that pick up the show now. I just give them the feed, the link off of that. They pop it in and it's immediately on their stations. But the phone lines are really intricate, too. I mean, if I had, uh, say, like you're you're up in what, uh, New York area, New Jersey? Yeah, New Jersey. Yeah, so if I had the system, I could actually give you the same software where you could screen all my calls and talk to people calling in and go, hey, what are you calling about? It's just like radio. And right, then you right. 
type in their name and then I would get it on my end and I could pop, I, you could pop them in for me or I could pop them in and go, Hey, uh, Ross from New Jersey, how's it going? You're talking about this. And then immediately they're on. Now I don't have anybody screening my call. So what I do is they come in on the call. If they've called in before their name pops up. So if they're a recurring call, I know who they are, but outside of that, it's just a number. And I just say, Hey, you're on the Jeff Adam show. Who's this? And then they go, blah, 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 blah. You know? Right. Right. And so most most people uh, play by the rules, so to speak, or you sometimes have somebody call in that, you know, you Listen, say, man, I, I wish I had a call screener. I'm yeah, like, yeah. I those, but you know what? When they do that, they don't win. And what I mean by that, I'm not not being cocky saying this. I'm pretty quick with it. So, you know, it, it would takes a lot for me to be flabbergasted with a prank phone call. And more than likely, I flip it around. Uh, right. I've had like I've had two people try to attempt to do that and they they failed miserably at where they actually just hang up the phone because they don't know what to say, um, you know. And uh, so most people they call in uh, because they want to call in. Sometimes I, I I get on live stream the phone lines are potted up ready to go and other times people just don't call in. You know, I mean it just really depends on the day I guess and the and the subject matter. Yeah, Michael Miller asks, how about a sec- seven second delay? As far as what I. I- uh, yeah, I mean, I guess if you're live streaming your show, you can't. There's no way to do to to dump and get back on in seven seconds or whatever, right? But for radio, I guess you could do it. For for traditional radio, you could do that. Yeah, traditional radio. I think there's a company that makes a box where you could take. Uh, it's it's they have it for TV as well. So if you wanted to, because you know your audio would be kind of out of whack. So if you had a dump button for just audio, like they have at radio stations your phone call delay system would be a little bit off and then your audio would be completely off on that phone call. So what they have now, they have the same type of box they use for network television for the same dumping, like for sporting events. So you just run your right. audio the video through it, you can dump it that way. But you know, I'm not a network TV, so I can't afford that. I mean, you're talking about a good uh, uh, $12,000 box there just to dump. And I don't, I don't get a lot of stuff. And plus if they do say it's cuss word or whatever, I mean, I'm more, I'm more scared. Phone calls don't scare me. It's the fact that we can do this. You can bring in video people and then you're sitting there and you're doing a, you know, a, a nice G rated PG rated uh, broadcast and someone has their titties hanging out. I mean, that's probably my worst fear. You know, right. most guys go, Oh wow. But you just imagine like, Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> right, 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 right. But yeah. And, and I mean, let's face it, this, you know, if you're live streaming, this isn't uh, covered by, you know, the old FCC rules or whatever. If, Somebody says a four letter word or something, you know, yeah. and it gets out over the air. You, you're not going to get fired or fined or anything. You no. just, you know, obviously for, you know, depends on what kind of brand you're building online or if you're what kind of sponsors or what kind of business you're building. You may not want that. But uh, ultimately, the, uh, you know, the, the, the downside is, is, is pretty low, right? You, you just move on from the person. Right. Yeah, I mean, you know, and that and that's that's the thing. The video scares me more than audio does any day, because you never know. I mean, you never know what you're going to get, or you know, you know, on the Jeff Adams show, we talk about a lot of relationship life issues, and you know, I, I, you know, on the phone systems, I get a lot of people that call that are really down, uh, going through hard times in life, and you know, my fear is like, you know, how, you know, how, you know, that that's the thing. I even thought about that. I mean, this is a whole other topic for a show too. It's like if something like that happened, like the people that you know, one guy that killed himself on a live stream, or something like that happened, of the nature of your show, you could be you could be held liable for that. Right. You know. Right. So, so that that to me is always scary. That uh, you, you never know something can come back and haunt you. Uh, someone doing something really crazy because they're not thinking straight right on your broadcast. You know, and that I always kind of think about that. Like, man, you know, because you. When that stuff happens, you, you just don't expect it to happen. And um, I mean, now I mean, that scares me the most. You know, more. You know, just having access of video and bringing video calls into a broadcast because you have really no way of screening these to mm. be live. I mean, you can see them in the portal, and if they look decent, you know, they got the clothes on. You can see in the little screen over there. Cool. <laughs> but then from there, you pop them up. You know, hey. Right. Anyway. Right. Looks like uh, Bobby Stamps has a question. Let's uh, let's bring him up. Hey, Bobby. Hey. Bobby. Hey. Did you want to ask a question to Jeff? Yeah. I got a question for Jeff Adams. I Long time no see you guys. Yeah, man. I saw you earlier today. You yeah. Came out, you came out Be Live Weekly. Yeah, Be Live Weekly was cool. Are you yeah, I just kitchen? wanted to jump in here and show you guys I am not scared to jump online live. 
I know you're not, Bobby. That's the attitude, Bobby. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Um, Did you have a question? or? Yeah, I just wanted to say, Ross, you rock, and uh, Jeff Adams, the amount of time it took you to get into your new house and set up your studio was amazingly fast, and it was amazing to watch you do that. Yeah, uh, you know it was it was stressful at times, but you know you made it through it. And uh, wow! And my my question to both of you guys is, what do you think about five uh, G? You know, cell service data transfer. And uh, I'll leave you guys at that. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Bobby. Appreciate the question. Um, I'll I don't know enough about it. Um, people that. Uh, a couple people I've talked to who seem to know more about it say we're still, I don't know, maybe five years away from it, but maybe we're not. I don't know. What I'm not sure if you know. Yeah, I mean, I don't really – I read stuff. I've read a lot of things about it, but until I have it in my hands, I really – if I don't play with it, I, I, I don't say anything about it because I just like – Right, right. Point. I don't yeah. know, Bobby. Don't know. But, uh, you know, as, as Bobby had said in the comments, it's, it is going to be a game changer. When there's 5G, it's going to change the way um, we can do shows and how many people we can have on and how many streams we can have and all sorts of things, the speed of which we can connect and everything. Uh, right. but, but, yeah, I think it's, it's still a ways away. And uh, all these sort of technological we're developing better video and we're developing AR and VR and all this stuff, but uh, obviously having 5G would would help, but things are moving forward anyway, right? I mean, you could have it, you know, like right now, you could have a fiber line, which is really high, and you could have like 45 up and close to 75 down. You know, and you got your, you got to think for a regular, you know, 1080 live stream, you need at least five up, right? So think of all the capacities if you wanted to stream the multiple platforms at the same time now but you really don't need to do that because like restream and um you know uh, rudy's you know rudy's saying uh they changed the name it used to be uh you know what i'm talking about rudy Joycaster now uh switchboard yeah. live yeah, yeah the ability to swim the uh, you know stream to their cloud or if you're using and you know other platforms they'll, they'll break it out and send it out for you so necessity is you don't really need all that unless you have a huge huge network you know, uh, we push on a lot of live streams simultaneously, but you know, 5G is going to be incredible for for mobile devices, no doubt. Yeah, Alexander Curtis says it's uh, he thinks it's a, a minimum four to five years away. Okay, so that that wasn't bad, uh, wasn't bad a guess on my part, I guess. Yeah. Um, but anyway, uh, I can't believe an hour's gone by already. Jeff, thanks so much for coming on. It's always awesome to talk to you, hang out with you, and um, so much great information and, and such a cool studio. I'm glad you were able to give us a little tour around and share also what's going on with Be Live and with the Jeff Adams show, and uh, we'll have to do this again soon. Yeah. Thanks, thanks so much for coming uh, on. Dude. Thanks for, you know, again, you know, thank you for having me on. I'm really honored. I, I mean, that sincerely. And I, I, in the past year, what you've done for live streaming, promoting other people's shows, the live stream universe and the live stream updates. Dude, you don't get enough credit, man. You really don't. I, I see your heart and all the hard work you put in, man. I really, really appreciate you, man. You know, I really do. Thank you. That means a lot. It's the Jeff Adams show. The Jeff Adams show dot TV. Uh, is where you find his home online uh, on social media. He's at the Jeff Adams. And of course he is the host of be live TV weekly every Monday, 3 PM Eastern. Uh, check it out. Great show. Uh, and you can find that on the be live TV, Facebook page. I will be back tomorrow. Uh, 1 PM Eastern. I'm going to be talking about why audio is the most important part, easy for me to say, most important part of your live video as part of our 15 days of content related to, to our South by Southwest topic. And, of course, if you just joined us a little bit late or you haven't had a chance to vote yet, please do go head on over to LivestreamUniverse.com slash sxsw livestreamuniverse.com slash sxsw vote for myself coach jenny monique johnson and karen graves for south by southwest our topic facebook live build your tribe and actually make money again livestreamuniverse.com slash south by south 
West. And I, again, I will be back tomorrow uh, talk about something related to that topic. We're going to focus on why audio is so important to your live streams uh, and in establishing your professional brand and selling and anything that you're doing online. That's Tuesday, 1 p.m. Eastern on Livestream Universe Facebook page, Ross Brand. Dot live will take you there. Have a great night, everybody.